Hi, this is Dave Colomer. Welcome to Module 2 of Basic English Grammar with Mary's Balls. As you recall, in our first module, we spent a lot of time on this sentence, Mary kicked the ball. And we said that it was kind of a basic or fundamental sentence in English, in the English language. And that we're going to use this throughout the course as kind of a fundamental uh, sentence that we keep returning to. Um, because eventually what we're going to do is adorn it or embellish it with many other words and make it into a longer, into more interesting sentence. And you recall that each word in a sentence has a function. And as you recall, in the first module, we eventually took the sentence, Mary kicked the ball, and expanded it into athletic Mary kicked the ball powerfully into the net. We expanded it into a more interesting sentence. And we also uh, defined or analyzed each of the functions of the words in the sentence. And we will continue to be doing that. Now, if you just joined us uh, in Module 2, I urge you to go back to Module 1 because there was a lot of background information that you will need to know as we move ahead in the next uh, four or five uh, uh, modules. We're going to move on to the topic of nouns. Nouns is probably something everyone has heard before, but what exactly are they? Well, the word noun comes from an old uh, Latin word meaning name. So nouns are simply words that name things. And there are four kinds of nouns, and we're going to take a look at those right now. The first kind of noun is persons. So any of these examples, Mary, Bob, girl, boy, woman, student, Aunt Sue, they're all people, or they're all persons. And in that case, uh, because of that, they're all nouns. Nouns can also be places. Oregon, Portland, Yosemite, India, beach, and mountain are all places, therefore are all nouns. Nouns can be things, objects that are in our environment. Ball, table, hammer, pencil, book, window, house. These are examples of things, and they are therefore nouns. And finally, ideas, sort of abstractions that we can't actually touch, but we know exist. Truth, honor, justice, love, excellence, those kinds of things we call ideas. Those are also nouns. Each of these persons, places, things, and ideas name something. All right, now <clears throat> nouns are used as subjects, direct objects, and objects of the preposition. In fact, you can almost call this a rule. You will always find if there's a subject in the sentence, it will be a noun. If there's a direct object in the sentence, it will be a noun. And if there's an object of the preposition, in other words, inside a prepositional phrase, it will be a noun. All right, let's take a look. Mary enjoys playing soccer. In this case, Mary is a person. Mary is a noun. She is acting, in this case, as the subject of the sentence. But in this sentence, Bob saw Mary playing soccer. Mary is no longer the subject. Bob is the subject. Mary has suddenly become the direct object. And in this sentence, Bob played soccer with Mary. Mary is no longer the subject or the direct object. She is the object of this preposition with. With Mary is a prepositional phrase. But there's Mary. So here's an example of Mary as a noun in three different functions, as a subject, as a direct object, and as the object of the preposition. Let's move on to a place. Palmer Field is where Mary plays soccer. What's the subject of the sentence? It's not Mary. Palmer Field is the subject. But in this sentence, Mary chose Palmer Field for playing soccer. Now Mary is the subject. Palmer Field has become the direct object. 
and finally Bob met Mary at Palmer Field. Palmer Field is no longer the subject or the direct object, but instead the object of the preposition at. This is a prepositional phrase. So again, the same noun being used in different functions. Very common in English. Let's look at this sentence. Spalding soccer balls are what Mary prefers. What's the, ob what's the subject of this sentence? Balls. Balls is the subject. <clears throat> and of course, balls is a noun. It's a thing. Our next sentence, Mary prefers Spalding soccer balls. Balls is no longer the subject. Mary is the subject. Balls is now the direct object. In the next sentence, Mary prefers Spalding soccer balls. Balls has now become the direct object. Mary is the subject. Balls is the direct object. And finally, we have Mary plays mainly with Spalding soccer balls. Mary's the subject. Balls is now the object of the preposition with. With Spalding soccer balls is a prepositional phrase. So again, we have balls in three functions, same noun, doing three different things. You can also recall that nouns can be ideas. We're going to use the word excellence as our idea here, and it is a noun. Let's look at the sentence. Excellent in tennis is what Mary strives for. Perfectly good sentence. What's the subject of the sentence? Excellence. Not Mary. Going to the next sentence, we see the word excellence also. Mary demands excellence in her play. This time, excellence is not the subject. Mary is the subject. Excellence has just become the direct object. And finally, Mary always strives for excellence. Mary's the subject. But excellence is not the direct object because we have a preposition here. Ex uh, excellence is the object of the preposition for. This is a prepositional phrase. So we have excellence in three locations, three functions, but it's still the same noun. All right, let's change gears a little bit, and I'd like to show you this sentence right here. Mary laughed at the funny joke. Let's review the analysis here. Subject is Mary, laughed is the verb, at the funny joke is a prep phrase, P stands for preposition, OP is object of the preposition, and funny is an adjective describing joke. Now, where's the direct object? Well, there is no direct object. The point here being that some sentences have no direct object, so don't be surprised if someone, if they come along like that and there's no direct object. Let's look at a similar sentence. Bob sat in the comfortable chair. Subject, verb, preposition, object of the preposition in, adjective comfortable describing chair. Again, I don't see any direct object here because there is none. And look at this sentence. The wind blew hard during the storm. Perfectly good sentence. Point out the direct object. It's not there. There is none. So you can have a perfectly good sentence without a direct object. Most of the time, there will be one, but sometimes there's not. Okay, we're going to change gears again. Let's look at this. Adjectives, close and distant. Some adjectives can be close, other adjectives can be distant. Or I mean the same adjective can be distant. Let's look at what I'm talking about here. We have a sentence, the brown horses were in the barn. What's the subject? Horses. The verb, were. In the barn is a prep phrase. We're used to that by now. Brown is an adjective 
describing what? Barn or horses? Describing horses. Notice how close the adjective is to the word it describes. Okay? Now, let's look at almost the same sentence, but a little bit different. The horses in the barn were brown. Well, brown is still an adjective describing horses, but look where it is. It's far away from the word horses. Don't be fooled by this. Don't think that this is some kind of a direct object or a preposition or something. Sometimes adjectives can be distant from the word that they uh, describe. Let's look at another example of a close and a distant adjective. Healthy roses are in the garden. What's the subject of the sentence? Roses. Healthy is a word describing roses. That's the adjective. Notice it's right next to the word that it describes. But here, the roses in the garden are healthy. The adjective is far away from the word that it describes. And finally, whoops, there's two more. The old car is behind Mary's house. Car is the subject. Old is an ad adjective describing car. We can also say the sentence this way. The car behind Mary's house is old. Old is at the end of the sentence, but it still describes car, uh, yeah, it still describes car at the beginning of the sentence. An example of a distant adjective. We're going to switch gears again and move to a different topic this time. Let's take a look. Mary is the captain of the soccer team. Perfectly good sentence. Uh, so again, where is the direct object? Well, Mary is the subject of the soccer team is a prepositional phrase, and we can never have a direct object inside a prepositional phrase. Team is the object of the preposition, not the direct object. So is captain the direct object? Seems like it, but it's not. Because captain and Mary are practically the same thing. In order to have a direct object, you have to have something different over here. Like Mary kicked the ball, Mary and ball are not the same. In the same way here, Mary and captain being the same, captain cannot be the direct object. So how do we describe what captain, the function of captain? Well, if Mary equals captain, then it's not the direct object. Let me show you another example using Fred. Fred was the president of the class. Perfectly good uh, sentence. Fred is the subject. Class is the object of the preposition. So is president the direct object? No, because Fred and president are basically the same. What we call this word in this situation is a subject equivalent. Back up here, captain is the subject equivalent of Mary. President is the subject equivalent of Fred. And we denote subject equivalent with the expression S-E. Let's look at some examples. Susan is the captain of the volleyball team. Susan is the subject. Captain, being what Susan is, is the subject equivalent of Susan. The rest of this we've been over before. Preposition, object of the preposition. Adjective describing team. Let's look at one more. Janet was a member of the soccer team. Janet is clearly the subject, but member is not the direct object because Janet and member are practically the same thing. In this case, member is the subject equivalent of Janet, the subject. We'll take a look at one more example of the subject equivalent. Mary will be the best golfer in the state. Mary's the subject. Golfer is basically what Mary is. Golfer is not the direct object, but rather the subject equivalent of Mary. 
By the way, look at the verb here. We haven't come across this before. This expresses a future action, and we have a double verb, will be, which we'll talk about in a future um, module. Let's look at this now. This is a little bit different. Same idea, but a little bit different. I met Fred, president of the senior class. What's the subject of the sentence? I. Is there a direct object? Yes, there is. Fred. I met Fred. Fred is the direct object. So, who does president refer to? I or Fred? President refers to Fred. But Fred is not the subject. Fred is the direct object. So, president is a direct object equivalent. President sort of equals Fred. And we denote that as Fred equals president as DOE, direct object equivalent. All right. So if we analyze that sentence, I would be the subject, met the verb, Fred the direct object, president would be the direct object equivalent, referring back to Fred. One more. Mary likes Bob, the man in the blue shirt. Mary's the subject, likes is the verb, Bob is the direct object of like, of likes. So what does that make man? Man refers back to Bob. Man is the direct object equivalent of Bob. We're going to turn our attention from nouns to pronouns. Pronouns. So what are pronouns? They are simply words that take the place of nouns. Let's look at an example here. Mary played golf. Mary went home. Mary ate a sandwich. Three perfectly good sentences, but each of them kind of short. And these sentences might be said by maybe a five or six year old kid, right? But if you're an adult, you don't want to go around talking like this. Instead, you want to kind of combine these sentences into one larger, more interesting sentence. And so the way we do that is like this. After Mary played golf, she went home and ate a sandwich. See, it's a nice flow. And this is an example of better speaking and better writing. What makes that possible is that we were able to use she instead of Mary. She is the pronoun used instead of Mary. Now, some pronouns can only be used as subjects in a sentence. These are the pronouns that you only find in a sentence as the subjects, as the doers in a sentence. I, he, she, we, and they. These can never be used as direct objects or objects of the preposition. On the other hand, these pronouns are used only as direct objects or objects of the preposition. Me, him, her, us, and them. You will never find these used as subjects in a sentence. By the way, notice the connection here. I, me, he, him, she, her, we, us, they, them. We even have a, a table here that makes it a little bit easier to see. Let's take a look at the table. <clears throat> In this column, we have pronouns that can only be used as subjects. In this column, we have pron pronouns that can only be used as direct objects or objects of the preposition in a prepositional phrase. I is a subject, me is the direct object. He subject, him direct object. She subject, her direct object, and so on. By the way, you and it don't change. Why that's so, nobody knows. <clears throat> but whether it's a subject or an object, you stays the same, and it stays the same. 
But there's one more thing to look at here. We're going to spend more time with this in the little in the future, and that's the word who, uh, a source of consternation for a lot of people. Who is used as a subject, but whom is always used as an object. It's as simple as that. Let's look at some examples of what we've been talking about, how some pronouns can only be used as subjects and other pronouns can only be used as objects. I saw Mary yesterday. Mary saw me on the golf course. Mary gave the ball, the golf ball, to me. Let's look at the pronouns. I is correct because it's the subject of the sentence. Me is correct in this case because it's the direct object. And me is correct in this case because it is the object of the preposition to. Let's look at three more sentences. He enjoys cooking. Susan saw him at the store. Mary went with him to the party. He is correct because he is the subject. Him is correct because it is the direct object of saw. And him is correct because it is the object of the preposition with. Let's look at another example using she and her. She went to the store Friday. Fred thanked her for the gift. Bob bought some candy for her. In this case, she is correct because it's the subject of the sentence. Her is correct as the direct object. And her is correct as the object of the preposition. Let's look at an example using we. We learn Spanish at school. <clears throat> the men beat us playing volleyball. The band marched by us. We is correct because we is the subject. But here, us is correct because us is the direct object of beat, beat us. And us here in this one is correct being the object of the preposition by. Let's look at they. They won the baseball game. Our team beat them at baseball. There were too many of them. And, as you might guess, uh, why is they correct? Subject. Why is them correct? Direct object. Why is them correct here? Object of the preposition. Let's look at this example because, guess what? There's no change. You are the new captain of the team. Mary saw you at the game. Fred walked by you on the street. Obviously, you doesn't change, as we have said before. All right, we've looked at a number of pronouns. Let's look at one more, the pronoun it. It was lying on the table. Mary saw it lying on the table. Jane paid for it at the counter. Again, we have the same use of it but different functions. Here, it is the subject of the sentence. By the way, we don't know what it is, and it's not really important in this case. Maybe it's a book. Maybe it's um, uh, a purse. Uh, who knows? But anyway, it was lying on the table. Mary saw it. Here we have it as direct object. And Jane paid for it at the counter. For it is the object of the preposition for. But notice it does not change. Okay. Let's look at this sentence. Us men will lift the heavy log. Does it sound right? Kind of hard to tell because a lot of people do say this, but strictly it's not correct. Because the subject of the sentence is this word right here. Men is an adjective describing this word, us. But us is the, object, is the object form of the pronoun. The subject form of the pronoun is we. 
So the correct, correct way to say the sentence is, we men will lift the heavy log. So let's take, uh, do a little quiz here and see how you're doing with understanding this. Mary saw Fred and I at the beach, at the field. Does that, is that correct? Well, Fred is okay, but I, should this be I or should it be uh, me? Well, don't go by how it sounds all the time. Go by its function. The, the su subject of the sentence is Mary. Fred and this pronoun right here are both direct objects. So I is not correct. I is the subject form. Instead, it should be Fred and me. Let's look at this example. Bob met he and I in the restaurant. A lot of people say it this way, thinking that it's correct. Let's see if it is. Bob is the subject. Met is the verb. He and I are direct objects. Are he and I forms of direct objects? No, they're not. They should, they're subjects. So these are not correct. He should be him. I should be me. The sentence should read, Bob met him and me in the restaurant. Let's look at this sentence. Mary beat he and she at golf. Well, don't go by how it sounds. Take a look at the structure. Mary's the subject. Beat is the verb. He and she are direct objects. Are these forms of direct objects? No, they're not. This should be him. This should be her. It should read, Mary beat him and her at golf. And finally, Susan brought she and I to the meeting. Again, some people say it this way, thinking that it's correct, that it just sounds correct. But grammatic, grammatically, it is wrong. Let's see again why. Susan is the subject. Brought is the verb. She and I are both direct objects. This must be her. This must be me. Susan brought her and me to the meeting is correct. Let's continue our quiz on pronouns. Let's look at the sentence. The secret is between you and I. How does that sound? Well, some people would say it sounds okay, but grammatically it's not. You is okay because you never changes. But I could be wrong. Let's see if I is correct here. Secret is the subject. His is the verb. Between is a preposition, which makes you and I both objects of the preposition between. I is not in the object case. It's in the subject case, so I is not correct. This should be me. The sentence should read, the secret is between you and me. How about this sentence? Mary went with he and I to the store. Sounds okay, but it's, it's wrong. Subject, verb, with is a preposition. So he and I are objects of the preposition with. This must be him. This must be me. It should read, Mary went with him and me to the, to the store. Let's look at this one. Bob bought some food for she and I. Subject, verb, we have a direct object in this case, but now we have a prepositional phrase starting out by four. So these pronouns must be objects of the preposition. Are they in the object form? No, they're not. They're in the subject form. So she must become her, I must become me. The sentence reads, Bob bought some food for her and me. Who is coming with Susan and I? You notice the pattern is the same here. We have a prepositional phrase. Susan's okay because that's not a pronoun. But how about I? Is that correct? No. I should be me because it's the object of the pronoun with. I mean the uh, preposition with. 
Okay, while we're on this subject, sometimes there is a hidden preposition, a preposition that's not, you can't see, but it's there. The hidden preposition. Let's take a look at what I mean. Mary gave him and me some candy. Well, let's analyze the sentence. Mary is the subject, gave is the verb, him and me, uh, let's see, candy. Where's the direct object here? Well, did Mary pick him up and give him to somebody? Did Mary pick me up and give me? No. So those aren't the direct objects. Actually, Mary gave candy. Candy is the direct object. So what does that make me and him? Because there's no preposition here. They are not objects of the preposition. Well, in fact, they are, except you can't see the preposition because it's hidden. Let's reveal where that preposition is. The sentence actually is, Mary gave to him and me some candy. But notice the two is omitted. This is very common um, in either spoken or written English. Um, and the point is, how do we know that him and me are correct? Because there's a hidden to there, which makes them objects of the preposition. The hidden preposition. Let's take a look at one more example. Mary gave Susan a new volleyball. Mary's the subject, gave is the verb. Now, did Mary pick Susan up and give her to somebody? No. Mary gave the volleyball. Volleyball is the direct object. What does that make Susan? Well, Susan is the object of the preposition, but we can don't see it. If we revealed it, we would have a two there. Mary gave to Susan a new ball, a new volleyball. Let's look at another example of the hidden preposition. Fred bought Mary some golf balls. Well, subject, verb, Mary. Did Fred buy Mary? Did he see her at the store and pay some money for her and take her away? No. Balls is the, pre is, balls is the direct object. Mary is the object of the preposition, which we don't see here, but it's hidden. For Mary. Fred bought for Mary some golf balls. Last example, Bob saved Mary some pie. Maybe they were at a party. Mary had to go home early. Bob saved some pie for her. So, did Bob save Mary? Did he put her away someplace and hold her? No. Mary saved Bob saved pie, which is the direct object. Mary is the hidden object of the preposition for. Bob saved for Mary some pie. We just don't say the word for, but it's there. Okay. This next example <clears throat> I saw on a television show and it was really kind of blew my mind because you had two reporters uh, from very well-known newspapers and they were talking to the moderator about having met some senator. We're going to use Senator Jones. And one reporter spoke to the moderator uh, about what she and the other reporter had done with Senator Jones. And this is what one of the reporters, who are experts, at language use, said to the moderator, Senator Jones gave she and I a great interview. Well, my wife and I were watching TV and we both went, whoa, wait a minute. These are reporters. Their whole job is to use words correctly. Let's see if this is correct. Senator Jones was the subject of the sentence. Gave is the verb. All right. Was there a direct object here? Yes. The interview. Jones gave an interview. All right. So she and I must be objects of some preposition that we just don't see. And the preposition is to. So being the objects of the preposition, she should have been her, I should have been me. The correct sentence should read, Senator Jones gave her and me a great interview. So 
don't be fooled when you're watching TV and you then see, you see reporters or other people who should know better make this horrible mistake with pronouns. Uh, you're not wrong. They are wrong. Finally, we're going to have to take a look at the use of who. Who is going to the party tonight? What's the subject of the sentence? The subject is who. Is going as the verb. To the party is the prepositional phrase. Who is correct because it's acting as a subject. Likewise, who are the smartest kids in class? Who again is the subject? In this form, it is correct. Let's look at a few other sentences using who. To whom do I owe my thanks? This is a perfectly good sentence. A little stiff, but sometimes people will say this. Is it correct? Well, what's the subject of the sentence? I. What's the verb? Do owe. What's the direct object? Thanks. Notice who in this case is a object of the preposition to. It must be in the object form. Is whom the object form? Yes, it is. So this sentence is correct. Let's look at this sentence. With whom did you go to this uh, game? It's a little stiff, but it is a correct sentence. But is the grammar correct? Let's look at who the uh, subject is. You as the subject, did go as the verb, to the game as a prep phrase. We also have another prep phrase here, with whom. With is a preposition, so whom must be the object of the preposition. This is in its correct form. It is correct. For whom did Mary purchase the golf balls? Again, I don't want to belabor all these other words. We have a prepositional phrase here, for is a preposition, whom must take the object of the preposition form, whom is correct. Now, here's something kind of tricky, and we're going to spend more time on it on a future, in a future um, module, but I want to introduce it to you. Let's say that you are Joe, and somebody calls you on the phone. And the person calling says, may I speak to Joe? What do you say? Do you say, it's me? Do you say, speaking? What if you say, this is he? Is that correct? Yes, it is. It's a little stiff, but it is correct. Let's look at why. What's the subject of the sentence, this is he? This is the subject. Is is the verb because he is the same as this, in this case, he is the subject equivalent, therefore he is correct. <clears throat> so someone calls on the phone to Jane and says, may I speak to Jane? Again, if you say this is she, being Jane, it is correct. This is the subject, she is the subject equivalent of this. How about this? Who opened the door? And they're looking at you. And you say, it was I. Is this correct? Yes, it is. Now, most of the time we say, oh, it was me or something, uh, which we use informally. But grammatically, we have the same situation. It is the subject. I is the subject equivalent. It must be in the subject form. Finally, let's say it was a group of people who won a baseball game. You could say it was they who won the game instead of it was them who won the game. Is this correct? Yes, it is. It is the subject. They is the subject equivalent of it. It must be in the subject form. They is correct. So, even though the grammar here is correct, um, as we said before in the first module, grammar does change, and especially the usage of words changes, or usage of sentences. And so, as our society becomes more informal, 
uh, we tend not to say things this way or write things this way. But I want you to be able to at least say grammatically these are correct forms. And with that, we will move on to our next module. Thank you.